minister, Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson has frequently been referred to as a Renaissance man. When look at his resume and the reason becomes clear. As a lifelong learner with a passion for self-development, personal transformation, transmutation and self-awakening, he lives his bliss as a teacher, mentor, speaker, minister, and so much more. His mission is to live, move, and be an actor, which is what he's doing right now, but not this first word. Authentic, well, yeah, he is. Compassionate sometimes. Transparent, inspired, vibrant, and empowered member of society who serves to educate, elucidate, emancipate, awaken, and empower people and communities. Reverend Rebbe Rev, 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 Ray, the floor is yours. Yo, Maragato, muchas gracias. Yeah, 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 you're, you're welcome and all that other good stuff. <laughs> Ah, good morning, all. Let us breathe and just take in everything that we have been granted and graced with and blessed with thus far this morning. Ah, so today, it's not quite a departure from how the Sunday talk would normally go, but it's a little bit of a departure because I want us to focus on something very specific today. So, if you've ever looked at the Science of Mind textbook, then you know it is a, it's a hefty read. It's not a pamphlet. And I want us to sort of realize or focus on the application of, the practice of, the embodiment of what we believe in CSL. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Declaration of Principles, the core concepts, these truths that we hold in science of mind and spirit. And what we're going to do is explore and explain how they support the global vision, the vision that is pulling us forward, while keeping in mind this idea of what Yeshua said in this idea of you shall know the truth pause, know the truth, you shall know the truth, not philosophize about the truth, not conceptualize about the truth, but you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And then within CSL, what do we, what do we say? There is nothing that needs to be healed, only truth to be revealed. Therefore, healing is synonymous with freedom, emancipation, and liberation. Right. So if we are healed, if we are healthy, if we are healthy and well in the expression of our lives, then that means we are a living demonstration of freedom, emancipation and liberation. So let's let's jump in with a question. What what is, what is that thing? This telescope. Right. What is it? What, is, what to what end is a telescope used for and how many people do what these two individuals are doing and they use it in a manner that is less effective. It's not wrong. The manner in which we use the law of mind in action, it's not wrong because we're always using it. Question is, are we using it in the most effective manner possible so that we have true and effective vision of what it is we desire to demonstrate and manifest in our lives. Because what do we know from Proverbs? Where there is no vision, quote unquote, the people live lives that are less life affirming than they could be. People live lives where they do not recognize or know their spiritual magnificence because vision is lacking. They are seeing the smallness of life rather than the grandeur of spirit. So what is our vision? for each of us in our individual lives, because that which spirit is, 
in in for lack of better words, spirit has a vision for its life. The universe has a vision for how it demonstrates and out pictures. And what it is, is what we are in this incarnation. What, what uh, say again, say again, what did, what did Eugene say? There is only one life. That life is God. That life is amazing and beautiful and powerful and joyful and loving. And that life is my life now, your life now, our lives now. So therefore, that life, the vision of that life is to, as Yeshua said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The vision of spirit, the vision of life is to live, move, and have its beingness in an abundantly powerful, joyful, blissful, magnificent expression. So when we are thinking about our individual vision, what is your vision? When you wake up on Monday morning and you envision how you desire your Monday to be, what is the vision that you hold in mind and in heart? What is the vision that you communicate in spoken and written words or signed words? What is the vision that you then move when you walk throughout your day, when you interact with people? What is the vision that people catch when they are in your presence? Carl Jung said, your vision will become clear only when you look into your heart. That person who looks outside simply dreams, while the person that looks inside awakens. When we do this deeply personal, introspective work, we have no choice but to therefore then bring it as an external expression of life. Science of Mind says, in our ignorance of the truth, we have misused the highest power we possess. And so great is this power, so complete is our freedom in it, so absolute the domain of law through it, that the misuse of this power has brought upon us the very conditions from which we suffer. Now pause, because I do not want us to metaphysically malpractice or bypass this idea and assume that such things as well, if I was molested or raped, then that means I brought this condition upon myself. Or if I was born into a racist society that I somehow, let us be mindful that there is both the individual mind and the collective mind. And so when we are speaking about this, are we talking about the ignorance of truth as an individual? Are we speaking about the ignorance of truth as a collective, as a mass consciousness, because as each of us awakens to that truth, then the tipping point, the resonant rippling of these, this consciousness must then also change and transform the collective consciousness. Keep in mind, there was a time when, well, there are a couple of people who still, but there was a time when the consciousness that the world was flat, there was a time when the consciousness said that the earth was the center of the universe and the sun rotated around. There was a time when, right? So we understand. But as we awakened, as we learned more, as we knew more of what the truth of science and technology and physics revealed to us, then our consciousness, our paradigms shifted accordingly. So as we think about this, Whatever this suffering is, whatever this condition is, we also recognize that there is a way to change, transform, transcend, and heal it so that no one needs suffer again. Now, as I mentioned before, there is the Science of Mind textbook, but we're going to, we're going to place that on the shelf for a moment and simply look at some of the Declaration of Principles, also known as the We Believe Statements, which Ernest Holmes crafted in 1927. Because if we go through these statements, which we're not going to do right now, I am simply providing these for the benefit for you to have all of this in one place. So that if you desire a copy of these slides, or if you join Dr. Ronnie and the study group folks on Thursday, 
This is all in one place for your convenience to go through and say, if I say that I too believe this, these statements, this declaration of principles, then what do each of these statements say to me, say about me, and what is mine to do regarding them? You got that? So breathe for a second. Because let's just take statement number four. We believe that heaven is within and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. Just that by itself right there. What does that mean to me? What is it saying to me? What is it inviting me to be, do, or have in the world? Heaven is within. It is a state of consciousness. And that I will experience it to the degree that I become conscious and aware and embody it in my life. Well, in order for us to understand that, we would have to say, well, what is heaven? Clearly, it's not that idea from some other anthropomorphic idea of heaven is that place where there are streets of gold and crystal lakes and angels and harps and bliss for all eternity. Because if we go by that idea of heaven, then we are also possibly piggybacking or tight roping between hell. And, and speaking about hell, if heaven is a state of consciousness, is hell a state of consciousness? Can I also be living in a paradigm, a state of hellishness? Hmm. So the invitation is to line by line, dissect it. What did Jung say? That individual that looks within, that individual that dissects and asks themselves, what do I believe and how do my beliefs shape and form my actions? What is my life a demonstration of? We go through the statements even more. There, let's go with, so we believe in the healing of the sick and the control of conditions through the power of this mind, this mind being the power of spirit, this mind being God. We believe in the healing of the sick. Do we? Do I? Do I believe in the healing of the sick and the control of conditions through the power of prayer, spiritual mind treatment, through the power of meditation, through the power of being anchored and grounded and aligned with this one life, God, this one mind, God, this infinite power and prayer. Do I believe? Hmm. And when I say sick, what does sick mean? Is that a headache? Is that a migraine? Is that cancer? Is that rape? Is that molestation? Is that PTSD? What does sick, sickness, illness, discord, what does that mean to me? Racism, sexism, are those sicknesses? Alcoholism, are those sicknesses that I believe can be healed, conditions that can be controlled through the power of law of mind in action? Do I believe that? Because if I do, then I am invited to, I am encouraged to, I am strongly convicted to walk and talk and feel and show up in a manner that demonstrates that as my belief. Cause and breathe. So we have this as one form of checking in. What do I believe? What does it mean for me to be a minister of? science of mind and spirit? What does it mean for me to be a licensed practitioner of science of mind and spirit? What does it mean for me to be a non-licensed practitioner of science of mind and spirit? What does it mean to attend a CSL where this is what the CSL believes? Because by default, I am also in, in, in sort of invited to believe this, but do I? This is not like You know, this is not my grandmother's Christianity, where simply being born into it, simply walking into a CSL means I automatically have to believe all of this. It's a practice. It's an exercise. It is an encouragement to go through the process of asking yourself in the same way that our global vision with CSL does the same thing. Go through each line. We envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. 
That's what CSL says, is our global vision, seeing all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. All people. Does that include the clan member? All people. Does that include the person who stabbed multiple times the 73-year-old Asian woman in California in an act of Asian hate? Does that include all people for me? And if not, then what is my invitation? And if so, what does that look like? Because it also does not mean to love in a syrupy kind of, yes, let's just kumbaya and love everybody. It's all about unity. All we are saying is love everyone. Because if that's the concept, then that's bypass. If you're just glossing over like a glazed donut, you're just making the bread sweeter than it needs to be simply because just glaze over. Rather than dive in and ask, what does it call me to practice within myself to envision all people, all beings, and all life as an expression of God? Moving further through. What happens when we get to, we envision a world where personal responsibility joins with social consciousness in every area of the political, corporate, academic, and social sectors, providing sustainable structures to further the emerging global consciousness. Why did I specifically pick that one? Because a lot of times in New Thought, we're like, we don't do politics. We, all we're supposed to do is pray and meditate and do Reiki and read A Course in Miracles. Leave that other stuff alone. But in CSL, part of the global vision says where personal responsibility joins with social conscience in each of these areas. How do we elevate consciousness in corporations so that they too see and understand and recognize the divinity, whatever we're calling it, that they too see and recognize it in all of life. Because when a corporation then sees and recognizes the divinity of, the, the preciousness of all life, there's no more desire to dump chemical waste into the water. There's no more desire to tear down vital trees in the rainforest simply to make more money. That is no longer in alignment with the consciousness that we are referring to in a world that works for all. So once again, as we go through each statement, we are asked, what is the truth of this statement that I am being asked to process, to recognize, to believe, to embody and to practice. So that's two documents. Then we get to the 10 core concepts within religious science or CSL, such as number one, oneness. God is the source of all that is, and you can call it whatever you want. You can call it the universe. The universe is the source of all that is, and the universe is all there is. Everything in the universe, <laughs> is made of the universal substance, Tracy laughing at me, and is a unique individualized expression of itself as the universe. Like you can call it the Tao, you can call it Jim. Let's call it Jim today. Jim is the source of all it is. Tracy is the source of all, Eugene is the source of all there is in each respective life. And how do I embody this oneness? How do I allow this breath that is being breathed by God itself, God breathing itself as me, God breathing itself as itself, calling itself me? What does this mean? Creative nature, prayer. What is prayer? Is prayer that idea of begging and beseeching that I remember from church when I was 12? What is prayer when it is referred to in a CSL? So once again, there are 10 core concepts that we are invited to go through and ask ourselves, what does this mean to me to believe it, 
to be aware of it, to practice it, to embody it, so that when I hear the word Christ, or I say the word Christ, I know that I am not as a member of CSL, as a religious science practitioner, I know that I am not referring to a person, but a principle and a power. Christ consciousness, Christ awareness. And it could be, once again, if the words, it doesn't, Brahma, Aham Brahmasmi, there is only that which is the divine presence. It doesn't matter what you call it. You don't have to call it Christ. Call it Buddha nature if that resonates more with you. But recognize that it's not a person, that it's an infinite power that is the truth of your being. So once again, each statement, what does it mean for me to forgive when we're talking about forgiveness as recognize or as a statement, as a core concept within CSL? And then re rather recently, as recent as 2018, CSL created these two book, well, it's a bookmark with two sides. And they're recognizing these are the principles and these are the practices. Now, this is not a complete list of practices because as I always say, everything, like my brother Eugene would agree with me that Tai Chi could very easily go on this list of practices. Qi Gong could very easily go on this list of practices. Gong Fu, easy, like there are many, 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 many practices that could go on there. Many? Many, a lot. Wow. But we are asked once again, what this principle of love, what does it mean? This practice of journaling, what does it look like for me if that resonates with me? See, we have a great many entry points into this teaching, into this philosophy, into embodying science of mind and spirit, recognizing that ultimately by practicing this, we are giving ourselves the ease, grace, and space to live life more abundantly, to live life in a free, liberated, emancipated, empowered, authentic, unapologetic, whole, perfect, and complete manner that demonstrates our divine spiritual magnificence, that the very smell we give off is the aura of spirit, the aura of love and compassion, of health, wholeness, and wellness. As I always remind folks, because one of the things we say in CSL is, because Ernest Holmes said it, be open at the top. But like a tree, we are invited to be open at the top and open at the bottom. In other words, do not deny the shadow. The shadow, the ego is not the enemy. The shadow, the ego is not the enemy. Yes, I repeated it because I want to make sure you heard me correctly. Thank you. You're welcome. So when we are open at the top and open at the bottom, we are receiving the full expansive nutrients for our growth just like a tree is deeply rooted in the darkness of the earth while its leaves and branches stretch toward the light of the sun. When we are open at the top and the bottom, then we are demonstrating our wholeness, our perfection and our completeness. Sherry Evans says, unity is the song of life. It is the grand theme underlying the rich variations that exist throughout the cosmos. Whatever we see, Whatever we experience is only a manifestation of this external, sorry, of this eternal oneness. So whatever it is that we are seeing, it is a demonstration, a manifestation of something in consciousness. So where we see discord, we are invited to shift the consciousness so that there is now being of one accord. Where there is disharmony, we bring harmony. Where there is illness, we bring wellness. We are able and invited to change, transform through recognition of this eternal oneness that each of us must be a part of, that each of us is the very thing itself in human form, incarnating itself. And many of us, when we drive, Tracy's laughing, she, she sort of, 
when we drive, we are invited to look forward rather than backwards. But how many of us live our lives truly looking forward rather than backwards? How many of us are so backwards focused that 98% of our lives, we're focusing on what happened back when? Wow. See, if you remember back in 1978, during the good old days when things were better, because nostalgia back then is better than now, what was is better than what is. I want to get back to the good old days because the present nowadays clearly must not be good. Remember, remember when, when things were better, when life was simpler? Those were the good old days, right? That's rear focus. We cannot be ever evolving in consciousness and expression when our focus, our consciousness is rear view mirror. Let us also be mindful that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said in his letters from Birmingham jail, the church has been an echo. Now, the church, what is the church? The church is the people. The church is not an institution that exists in and of itself. The church didn't just land one day and say, boop, I'm the church and I'm here. The church is the congregation. The church is the amalgamation of people coming together, congregating. The church has been an echo rather than a voice, a tail light behind the Supreme Court and other secular agencies, rather than a headlight guiding men progressively and decisively to higher levels of understanding. Am I letting my life be a headlight moving forward, or am I rear focused as the tail light forever? moving based upon what was, who I was, not who I am and who I forever will evolve into. Breathe. Thich Nhat Hanh, Buddhist monk says, aware of economic, political and social realities around the world, as well as our interrelationship with the ecosystem, we are determined to behave responsibly as consumers and as citizens. It's about recognizing that eternal oneness. When I hurt, harm myself, because there is only one, it's going to affect others. When I hurt the environment, it hurts others. When I am stingy, selfish, and greedy, there is going to be a ripple effect. There are dominoes, cause and effect. So how mindful am I of my practice, recognizing the interconnectedness, the interrelatedness of God with every way that God is showing up throughout all of creation. An anonymous quote often attributed to Malcolm X but more than likely wasn't said by Malcolm X. When I becomes we, even illness becomes wellness. There is no I separate in and of itself other than the infinite I am that each of us is ever becoming. All for one and one for all. There is only one. And when we recognize this, then we also understand that when we are open at the top, as above, then we are open at the bottom, so below, that we recognize this interconnectedness of how spirit shows up, how the law of mind in action operates within our lives. We understand that we are not single individuals, but that we are triune beings. We are body, mind, and spirit. We are all of these things. And when we ground and anchor and put it into practice, in a conscious manner, then we are able to change and transform our lives and live in a completely different, more empowered, leveled up, more loving, more authentic manner. Howard Thurman says, there is no alternative to the insistence that we cannot escape from personal responsibility for the social order in which we live. 
This means that there must be participation. Let us say that again. Wow. There must be participation in the social process. There must be participation in the social process. Hmm. So we must be engaged socially. We must be engaged collectively. So I cannot simply sit in my house and pray and think that that's an, oh, when, because when I move my feet, when I treat and move my feet, my feet cause me to be in relationship to others, how I show up, how I speak to the waiter or waitress at the restaurant, how I speak to the store clerk, how I interact with the neighbors. All of that is participation in the social process. Breathe. We have a collective responsibility. We understand that united we stand, but divided, quote unquote, divided we fall. Therefore, what does this mean? It means that I, you've heard me say this before, if you have ever been here before, you've heard me say this before, am I my brother's keeper? No. Am I my sister's keeper? No. I am my brother, I am my sister, and I am my gender non-conforming sibling, and they are me. There is only one of us one power, one presence showing up as all of us. So what are we invited to do? What is this social responsibility, this collective responsibility? To end war, turn the sword into a plowshare, to end racism. How? By changing the way we talk about it. Don't talk about it from the paradigm of tail light. speak about it from the paradigm of headlight. Don't talk about illness from the paradigm, talk about wellness from the paradigm of. We are far more capable than we give ourselves credit to be because we are the very thing that is life itself, living, moving, and being, breathing itself as us. Lenora Tubbs Tilsdale says, Teasdale says, hope of a new day to come when people will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into farming implements, hope of a coming time when children would safely play without fear of harm. What does this mean? When my grandkids go to school, there should be no active shooter drills because there should be no concept of active shooter. There should be no concept of someone doing harm to children. How does my consciousness, how does the manner in which I show up as a CSL minister, as a licensed practitioner, how is my consciousness changing, transforming? What, 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 what did we read before? We believe in the healing of the sick and the control of conditions through the power of this mind. What is mine to do to bring this healing about? Our homework for this week, to journal. What is your personal vision, mission, and purpose statements? What governs the manner in which you live? What issues or topics are you passionate about? Are you passionate about women's rights, LGBTQ rights, the ecosystem, global warming? What are you passionate about, education? What stokes your fires and gets you going? Whatever it is, and, and think about it in terms of your area, your local region, what am I passionate about? Your state, is there something statewide that you're passionate about? What about nationally? What about internationally and globally? Is there something that you are passionate about at each of these various levels or degrees? How do the above issues or topics that you are passionate about affect you individually and how do they affect others collectively? Meaning if you are passionate about clean water being available, you are passionate about ending shootings in Baltimore City, how does that affect you individually and how does it affect others collectively that that is now coming to an end, that it is now done and over with, that now there is peace and harmony ringing throughout the city? And so it is. How does that affect you individually and collectively? And then lastly, have a conversation with four people, four people, you said four personas, <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cuatro personas. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Have a conversation with four people about each of those documents that I shared, the Declaration of Principles, 
the 10 core concepts, the global vision, and the science of mind principles and practices. Have a conversation about that with people. Just to go through, what, what, what does it mean to me? Discuss what are your challenges regarding it? What is, what is the work for you to do or for us to do in this conversation, individually and collectively? And we breathe. I will say our declaration for this week. And then together, if you resonate with it, I am the spiritual and moral arc of the universe. Together, I am the spiritual and moral arc of the universe. And we breathe to simply let that resonate and sink in. And so right now, let us simply close out recognizing the isness and the allness of spirit right here and right now, moving through in and as every atom of our being, every space between the atoms, every electronic and, and, and firing of synapses in our brain and our hearts and all of creation is this one. And how joyous it is to know that that which God is, that which spirit is, that which is the infinite I am is living, moving and having its beingness its magnificent expression as us right now. And that that divine nature of freedom, that divine nature of being whole, perfect and complete, that truth we hold to be self-evident. And we hold it in such a manner that we live, move and have our beingness as it in our lives. And so it is. Namaste, blessings. Love you all.